was threatening to send 500,000 migrants as a psychological weapon against Europe. The Italian Minister for the Interior, Angelino Alfano, said at the time, quote, if the militias of the caliphate advance faster than the decisions of the international community, how can we put out the fire in Libya and stem the migration flows? We're at risk of an exodus without precedent. In February, the Turkish intelligence service warned police that up to 3,000 trained jihadists were seeking to cross into Turkey from Syria and Iraq and then travel through Bulgaria and Hungary into Germany and Western Europe. This is a dispatch from San Francisco by Michael Savage on the ground radio, direct to you, the people of the world. You are facing an existential end to your existence, not tomorrow. But within 10 years, you will not be living in your own country if this is not stopped. If these gangsters and burglars called prime ministers, presidents, chancellors are not stopped by being thrown out of office immediately, you will not have a nation in 10 years. 98% of all political scientists who were not bought and sold by the establishment have proven beyond a reasonable doubt that what I'm saying is true. You say, where did he come up with that? Well, you believed Obama when he says 98% of all scientists believe that global warming is caused by man. Those are the scientists that he owns. He buys them off with grants. So I'll give you the same thing. 98% of all political commentators and analysts who are not owned by the government media complex agree that the West is doomed in 10 years unless drastic steps are taken. Why don't you put that into your pot pipe and smoke it, girly? So you can read all about it. You can read about the Hijra. You can hear about all of what I'm saying. If you dare, you dare read the truth. You're afraid of it. It's all in government zero out next week. Now, I want to play a little bit of, can we, no, we can't do it now. Gee, I'm just moving ahead without a call here. All right, when I come back, it's going to be me doing Sanders versus the uh, synagogue jester doing Sanders right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Yes, last week I bought my second pair of underwear. Yeah. That's a joke. All right. Please don't write it down. That was a joke. Joke, joke, yes. I have an ample supply of underwear. And, uh... See how funny he is? Now, what you don't understand is that the entertainment community is brilliant, powerful, all-pervasive. And in another time when this nation was faced by fascism, they used all of their powers to ridicule the enemy. And here, this very same entertainment complex ridicules not the enemy itself, but the American people. Ridicules Christians, Jews, Republicans, gun owners, those who have some care about the unborn, all ridiculed by this entertainment complex. If the same entertainment complex were to ridicule ISIS, radical Islam, then we'd have a great ally in this battle of battles, this battle for the survival of civilization as you know it. But no one's ever articulated what I just said. In those few sentences, I have defined what is missing in this battle against radical Islam. No one has done it. Nobody has done it. No one. No one has done what I just did in those few sentences. Robert, put that one up on YouTube. Get that one up on my Facebook. How the entertainment complex once fought fascism and must fight fascism again is the title now i spell it all out in my great plan for saving america in government zero no borders no language no culture when i talk about how the gangsters and burglars who've broken the doors off our borders must be stopped at all costs Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Obama's the shortest straw the country's ever had. Hillary will be an even shorter straw. Welcome to hour number two of the Savage Nation. 
It's interesting to me that an anti-immigration party has won a Swiss election moving to the right. It's interesting to me that Europe now sees the insanity of open borders. And what's more interesting to me is that in this campaign, in this idiotic nation of ours, this drug-addicted, de-Christianized, de bald nation of ours, there is almost no discussion of stopping the flood of illegal aliens into this nation, whether from the south, east, north, or west. It seems that if you say one word about it, they try to silence you with their humor, with their hatred. They target you. Europe woke up, maybe too late, don't know. We'll have to see whether they can overcome Merkel and the other psychos and take their nations back. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to win. I don't know. I know they built a wall, beautiful razor wall. Hungary built a razor wall, and it stopped the flood of Muslims sweeping into Hungary. I know Israel's erected a wall to protect Jews from the Palestinian knifers. I get it. But here we're not allowed to say we need a wall. Trump says he wants to build a wall. He was called every name under the sun. But he's the only man talking about borders, language, and culture. In his own way, he's the only one saying it, which is why he's surging. And he will win the nomination. He will win the election unless and unless, I'm not going to talk about the election right now, unless the Hillary corrupt, the corrupt Hillary machine can register all the illegal aliens as fast as possible, which is what their plan is. They don't even have to register them. The most evil one is Jerry Brown who just converted motor vehicle bureaus into instant registrations for non-citizens. Wasn't bad enough that they have a one-party system in California. Jerry Brown now wants a no-party system. He doesn't even want elections. If you get enough illegal aliens into the country, you could probably have them vote to never vote again. He could put a ballot out that says, this ballot measure is to determine whether people even need to vote again since we have such perfect rulers in such high places in Sacramento, uh, and they'd say, uh, yeah, I mean, you bring them in from all these countries, they can't even read. Chicago, in the 1930s, I read, they used to give out $5 bottles of whiskey to voters to get them to vote Democrat. They don't have to do that now. Give them an Obama phone. Give them a food stamp. Give them a food stamp. Give them an Obama phone. Give them a, a welfare job. That's all. What do you need to give them a $5 bottle of whiskey? Give them everything else for nothing. They'll do whatever you want for a thousand years. So I want to talk about something else right now, which is what I alluded to in the last hour and led up to in the last hour, and I'm a very logical man, and sometimes paralogical. I didn't say illogical. Notice the difference. They can call logic, illogic, and paralogic. And I'll let you look up what paralogic is. So I want to give you a paralogical discussion, which is about how the entertainment industry was once used, and very effectively at that, to fight... Hitler to fight Tojo and help win the war. In other words, they demonized the enemy. I studied the propaganda of World War II. There have been whole books written about it. If you take the time to study it, you can Google it probably, find it. You'll see that the Germans were uh, drawn in a certain way to make them ugly. The Japanese were made with buck teeth to make them ugly. They were demonized. Well, you say, well, that's, that's repugnant. Yeah, well, through our eyes, it's repugnant, but through the eyes of people fighting fascists it was war now the enemy uses propaganda to create pictures of jews for example have you seen any of the ugly pictures of jews painted by arabs in, in the palestinian territories have you seen any of that haven't seen that hasn't made it to your local newspaper uh have you seen any of the propaganda against americans being promulgated around the world so they're they're engaging propaganda they're painting you as oafs and idiots drug addicts sex addicts and eliminating all of the hardcore of this country. And so what I'm saying is simple. It's not that complicated. Make believe we're just talking here. It's very simple. I'd like to see movies that show the Islamo-fascists for the vermin that they are. I want to see one movie showing them raiding a village, a Yazidi village, and killing the husband, but before they kill him, make him watch them rape his wife and his daughters and then take his daughters away in slavery and then kill the man. I'd like to see reality shown once to put the fear of God into the idiots in this country before they themselves wind up on the chopping block. Write that down. Did that shock you? Did you get a, a, did you get a feeling from what I just said? Did those words go through you like bullets? Well, let me tell you something. Get ready for the machine gunning of this show. 
I got a 50 cal in my hands, and I'm not going to stop firing the bullets today. It's the end of the road. When I see the massive influx into Europe, and I see Hussein in the White House, I see Merkel in Germany, I see Cameron in England, I realize that there's no one who could save the, the West other than the people themselves. These are useless or collaborators. There's no other word. Either they're useless idiots or collaborators with the very enemy that would destroy our civilization. Write that down. And don't talk to me about Bernie Sanders' underwear and tell me how good the imitation was by, by Larry the synagogue jester. I know how clever these boys are. I grew up with them. They laughed their way to the billionaire's circle by mocking everything decent in this country. First they mocked their own rabbi. Then they mocked the temple. Then they mocked their mother. Then they mocked their father. Then they mocked the nation. Then they knocked, mocked Boy Scouts. Then they mocked Christians. And they mocked the family. You think I don't know who they are? The, the audience can never get enough of it. You could feed people swill and they will eat it. Because it tastes good. You just keep shoveling swill at them and they'll eat it. You don't want to give them healthy food because they don't like it. So if you're in the business of shoveling swill and the pigs eat it, you'll get very wealthy indeed. That's how Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and others have become engorged on money and wealth and power. And that's why they can spend their later years chasing men, chasing women, whatever they want to do, and laughing at everybody. Living on 200, 300 foot yachts, laughing at the world, cursing the world, the very world that gave them their power, still mocking it, still not seeing the world for what it is. So you say, am I painting too dark a darker picture? Mike lighten up? No, Mike's not going to lighten up. No, no, not today. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe I'll wake up in another mood tomorrow. But right now, I'm focused on what's going on. I'm, I'm focused on the hijra, the grand strategy to overtake the West and convert it to Islam. I went back to uh, Mecca, 622 CE. I told you how transcripts were found on documents from ISIS of invading Europe. I talked about intelligence services warning the West, but no one paying attention. I talked about any country that accepts massive immigration from Islamic nations as committing suicide. I talked about Lebanon, once a predominantly Christian nation, only 75 years ago. Paris in the Midwest, Mideast, sorry, commercial banking center compared to Switzerland. And then the liberal Lebanon Christian Lebanon, circa 1950. Lebanon took in Islamic refugees from Syria and other war-torn areas. PLO defeated by the Jordanian military in 1970. Black September massacre. Palestinian militants went to Lebanon. Right away, violence between Palestinians against the Maronites, the Lebanese Christians, and other Lebanese factions. Today, Lebanon is a hell. Europe runs the risk of becoming a hell, then America runs the risk of becoming another hell like Lebanon because of the same thing. Massive hijra, massive hijra being planned. So in England, Cameron today, just today, this is fresh, this is brand new, you haven't heard it anywhere yet, put out a new plan to combat Muslim extremism. He said that the battle is the defining one of the century. Immediately, Muslims in England condemned it. Counter-extremism strategy was condemned immediately by the Muslims in England. They have a good thing going. <laughs> Where else can you have 12 children and live on welfare and then spit on the flag and say you want to kill the queen and, and not be thrown out of the country? Why would you want them to change laws? Why would you want to change anything if you can spit on the Union Jack, threaten to hang the queen, have 20 children, live on welfare, not pay a dime, and get away with it? What other country on earth would you want to go to? Nowhere. You have it very good. So the uh, <laughs> Prime Minister of England said they're going to counter it. But Muslim groups don't like it. They're very uneasy with the measures. And so they want to ban them. See, they want to ban the uh, radical Muslims. They want to throw them out of the country. They want to throw them right out of the country. They want the hatred gone. They want to throw these children out of the country before they cut someone's throat. Throw them right out of the country. They want to stop them on their path to violence and kick them out of their beautiful country. So right away, the Muslims say, no, 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 you can't do that. It's extremism. Well, you know how that goes, right? Charge of Islamophobia is used to imitate people into thinking there's something wrong with resisting jihad terror and Islamic supremacism. We hear a lot about white supremacism. And I'm sure there are people who are white supremacists. There's no question about it. But is it limited to white supremacists? 
Are you telling me Larry David behind closed doors doesn't uh, voice another type?